the simplicity of the gospel. What is my shout? And where is your shout today? There's some of you are at a point of your life where you, where you will say, if God don't do it for you, you're done. If God doesn't do it, you're done. How many of you are trusting and believing God for some really, really, really outlandish things? You're ready to shout. You're ready to shout. You're sure that you're ready to shout. Well, look for the challenge this week. Look for the challenge this week. For those of you who said, yes, I'm ready to shout. I'm ready to shout. God has heard. God has heard. And surely he will put things in motion. But when you see that situation arise, oh, that's too difficult. That's too hard. Lord, send another situation that I can shout on. Not this one. Not that one. You tell me to get along well with the girl at work or with that fella at work. No, God, not that one. Give me another one. Give me another one. How many chances do you expect God to give you? How many? Because he said that we must forgive 70 times 7, that doesn't mean that you have a 70 times 7 chance in your pocket. You might allow that opportunity to pass you by because of disobedience and not following through with the process. I need God to do so much for me. So much for me. We want a house. We want our home. We started the process. You find a piece of land. You get it. You get a plan done. And the plan has one estimate. All right. It's looking like you can get somewhere. You go and find a contractor. And when you turn the leaf and you see the estimate, you almost faint. That was me. When I saw the estimate, I said, what? I say, you for real? I say, but God, but God is able. God is able. I said, surely God will not forget his word and neglect his word in our lives. But I still looking to make sure that I cover all things and I'm not leaving that place out where I am supposed to shout. Make sure you're not leaving any stone uncovered. That you don't bypass that place you're supposed to shout. At the appointed time. At the appointed time after they have done all that they were supposed to do. Donnie McClurkin penned a song. After you've done all you can, just stand. And see the salvation of God after you have done all that you're supposed to do. And I will drill that in our minds. You got to do what you're supposed to do. Put away things. There's some things you got to put away, put away, put away, put away, put away. In the Old Testament, we read a lot. When the children of Israel were coming into the promised land and God was instructing them to put away the idols, put away the false gods, don't mix up with them, don't intermingle with them, don't intermingle. And then something will happen. Don't contaminate yourself. But do what you're supposed to do. And then let out your shout. For some of you, your shout has to be actually shouting in praise and in worship unto the Lord. That's where your shout has to be. 
And that, was, that is what caused this wall to fall. It was not a little one inch or two inch wall. This was a wall that had houses. Chariots used to drive along this wall. So you could imagine how thick this wall is. There is absolutely nothing that God is unable to do. But you will not see it happen if you limit his hands. If you limit him by not following the process. God doesn't spoil us, you know. How many of you had aunties and uncles and grandparents that spoiled you rotten? Nobody in here had any? You don't want to show it up? Yeah. I didn't have any. But a lot of these little children in here know. They probably could say, yes, I have an auntie. Yes, I have an uncle. Somebody, a grandparent that spoils me rotten. God is not like that. God knows how to create character and build character in us. God knows how to establish us for the next journey in a life, for the next thing that we have to face. God knows how to do that. And he can't accomplish that by spoiling us. Can't accomplish that by spoiling us. So for those of you who have been spoiled, don't expect God to spoil you. Don't expect God to spoil you. There's some things that you have to do, some muscles that you have to build, character that you have to build. Because when God makes you into whom he desires for you to be, it's not just for you. It's so that you can impact others and so that you can impact this world. It's for his power to be revealed in this world. If we look at chapter 5 in this book of Joshua and verse 1, we see what happens when others see the power of Almighty God in operation. Verse 1, it says, and it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, when they heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel. So when people, your neighbors see what God has done for you, that extraordinary thing. I'm not talking about waking up in the morning because look, all of us are up. Yes, we are grateful, but I'm talking about that thing that is extraordinary. Extraordinary. When they saw that the waters were dried up and the Israelites were able to pass over, their hearts melted. Their hearts melted. Neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. When people see what God has done in your life, when they see what God has done in, their, in your life, their hearts must melt. Some will attribute it to other things. Don't mind that. But once you know that it is God and God's glorious power is being displayed, continue to shine for him. Continue to walk in that path that he has set out for you. And don't forget to shout. Don't forget to shout for the Lord has already given you the victory. If you have a mountain that is blocking your view, blocking your progress, and you know you've already been praying, you've already been fasting, you commit yourself to the church and to the ways of the Lord, ask yourself, 
where am I not shouting that I'm supposed to shout? Ask yourself, where is that shout? So our shout could be in various forms. It could be as a result of, as I said before, unforgiveness, as a result of not praising and worshiping God as we ought to, as a result of the lack of faith, as a result of no faith. Where's your shout? Where's your shout? As a result of not putting away the things that God says we said we ought to put away. We got to shout. And we have to follow through. And when we follow through, we will see those walls. We will see those mountains. As stated in the word of God, they'll fall flat. They'll fall flat. They may not shift. Because some of us, we need more than just a little shifting in some mountains. We need a little bit more than just a shift. We need some mountains to fall flat. They need to fall flat. When I think about my children, my little children, they're very young, three years and eight years, I need to see some mountains falling flat your children may be old adults you don't need to see some mountains falling flat aren't there some mountains you would like to see disappear in their lives they gotta shout you gotta shout on their behalf don't say i can leave them to themselves and let it do for themselves sometimes Somebody needs to have somebody in their corner. Somebody needs to have somebody who will hold their hand and shout for them and with them. You got to shout. You have to shout. And remember, we're staying away also from the accursed thing. If we continue to read in chapter 6. Verse 18, it says, and ye in any wise, you got to be wise. The word of God also says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him, let him do what? Ask of God who gives willingly and he's not going to quarrel with you for asking. Almost every day I ask God for wisdom. I say, Lord, grant me wisdom. Grant me more wisdom. More wisdom. Because he's not going to withhold it from me. He says, and you in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing. People of God, let us be wise. And let us keep ourselves from those things that are accursed. You know what they are. You know what they are. Keep yourself from the accursed things. Whether it be lying, whether it be fornication, whether it be adultery, whatever it may be, may, may it be may, it may be stealing, whatever it may be. Having idols, putting things and people ahead of God. That's an, that can be an accursed thing. Be wise and keep yourself from the accursed thing. Lest you make yourselves a curse. When you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. Sometimes that happens in churches as well. We in our personal lives, we mix up. But a lot of things, and I'm talking particularly to those who are a part of the ministry, hands-on working in the ministry. And when you come in, 
when we are to, supposed to be together and in unity, because you have mixed yourself up with the accursed thing, God can't be in the midst of that. So we damage the unity. And therefore, we don't see the victory being realized in the lives of others because we are not in alignment. We have tainted our, our garments, tarnished ourselves. But verse 18 encourages us to be wise and to keep the accursed thing out of our camps. Keep them out. Stay away from these accursed things and shout for the Lord has already given you the victory. He's already done it for you. And I want to give you the opportunity this morning to, for those of you who maybe somebody came in with their phone on, volume on, for those of you who may be lacking in your worship and in your shout, true worship, I want to give you the opportunity to do that this morning. I want to give you the opportunity to challenge God's word this morning and don't leave here the same way that you've come. I want to give you the opportunity to check your heart and your spirit to see where you're lacking in that quote unquote shout. The simplicity of the gospel.